Hi, my name is Keith Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman and Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues, and today we're going to discuss something that's very interesting, um, and I, I think you'll find it informative. So please subscribe to our channel. Um, today we're going to talk about the issue that comes up a lot: Do I have to release my kid to someone other than the parent? Here's the scenario: You got a visitation thing. Um, it's all set up. I don't know. Mom's supposed to come and pick up the kid. Somebody else shows up. Oh, uh, Carol couldn't make it today, so she asked me to do the drive. You may not know this person, or worse, maybe you do know this person. Maybe this is the person you like. Maybe this is the person you don't like. Maybe it's a uh, some new guy that shows up, and you don't know anything about it, and uh, you know you're you're apprehensive about it. I would say this. You know, you've got to try to be, you know, intelligent about it and try to be, uh, have a reason. You have to always look at it like, if I have to answer to the judge, am I going to be comfortable with the answer I'm going to provide? Because the court's going to want to, know, want to know, why didn't you comply with discovery and facilitate it so that your kids could go to the mom? Why didn't you do that? And if the answer is, well, I knew that um, she wasn't going to be there, but our visitation agreement says that uh, she's supposed to do the pickup, the, the court's not going to be very happy with you. Expect to be, you know, sanctioned for that kind of activity. But if the mom doesn't give you a heads up, she doesn't tell you that somebody's going to come, and some dude shows up in a van and says, oh, I'm supposed to pick up your kids. You don't let them go. You don't know who that guy is. You don't know if he's on drugs. You don't know if he's drunk. You don't know if he's just intercepted a message and is kidnapping your kids. How on earth would you know? So, no, I would say in that scenario, you don't allow it. But those are extreme cases. In most cases, the way this comes up is that someone known to the person shows up, like the grandma. She shows up. Oh, yeah, she, you know, Susan's working late today, so I'm picking them up. And, it, you know, the question is, do you have to cooperate with that? I would say that even if you don't technically have to cooperate because the visitation is specific as to mom or dad, you should do the best that you can to be able to make sure that the visitation is facilitated in such a way that, you know, the kids get a chance to spend time with dad and time with mom. If you don't want to release the kids to uh, Aunt Jen because the order doesn't specify her by name, you better have a damn good reason and an explanation to give to the judge of why you didn't do that. Because unless you can say that she's a drug addict and an alcoholic, and unless you can say, I didn't know who that was or whatever, or, or there's some sort of issue, you're, you're, the court's going to look at you and say, all you're doing is trying to frustrate the relationship between mom and the kids. And that is not going to uh, portend well for you. So, therefore, if you're in that situation, obviously you got to act reasonably. you got to do what's protective of your kids. But the truth of the matter is, if you know it's coming and you know that the kids are not going to be in danger, you should cooperate in that process as best as you can. You know why? Because there will be a time when you can't pick up the kids. And you're going to have to call a mutual friend or someone to do this for you or else lose your parenting time. And in that situation, you're going to want the flexibility. So you have to realize the flexibility that you're going to want, same flexibility you have to extend. But again, only within your comfort zone and only within reason. If you have any questions about that, reach out and we'll be glad to help you out.